Hey, welcome to Animal Arc. I'm Dr. Mitch Spindell, and it's February. Although it's like 65 degrees outside, it is February, and that means it's time to be talking about Lupron and adrenal disease if you're a ferret owner. We'll be right back. This is typically the time of the year when ferrets begin their rut, which is when they start to get geared up to reproduce, because most of our ferrets in the United States are spayed and neutered at a very young age. Um, they, um, they miss the negative feedback needed to stop the hormones after they breed. So let me tell you this story. In the spring, based on the day and night cycles, a little gland in our brain in the middle of our head called the pituitary gland, here's a ferret, signals these little adrenal glands, which are near the kidneys. There's a blow up here, but uh, basically the pituitary, again, based on the day and night cycle, signals the adrenal glands to start to produce hormones. Those are sex hormones like, like um, uh, estrogen, testosterone, um, and they get our bodies geared up. We bulk up, the boys get a little angry, the girls go into heat, um, the boys fight it out for their girls, and the girls accept the boys. They breed. Once the girls are pregnant and uh, the hormones and the drive goes down, their ovaries and testes feed back to the adrenal glands and say, time out, we're good, we're done, and we'll see you next year. The problem is, is if you've been spayed or neutered, meaning you've lost your testes or your ovaries or they've been removed, there is no feedback after you're bred um, to tell the body to stop reproducing. So clearly without ovaries and testes, there's no breeding, but still in the spring, in February, March, the brain is still signaled by the day and night cycles to begin this process. So what happens is every year that a ferret goes into its pseudo heat cycle, the adrenal glands get turned on and they stay on for longer and longer periods of time, again, because there's no feedback to turn them off. Um, and what eventually happens with these overactive adrenal glands is that they become adenomas or benign cancers. And as that progresses, they become carcinomas, which are bad cancers, which have the potential to metastasize or spread to other organs. So clinical signs of adrenal disease in a boy would be a ferret that's very sweet that becomes aggressive, or in a girl where their little vulva starts to swell as if they're in heat. Hair loss is very, very classic, starting at their tail. They call it rat tail. Their hair goes away on their tail, and then it creeps right up their body. And we've had classic adrenal disease ferrets come in with just literally three tufts of hair on the top of their head. You could diagnose them pretty easily from across the room that it's an adrenal ferret. Um, and those are the cosmetic things that we see. Um, and then what eventually happens is they start to lose weight, they start to have problems. So what we do to stop this, if we can catch them early, is we give them an injection of a drug called Lupron. A depot Lupron shot lasts three months, which will cover that rut season. So every now, we've got ferrets lined up this time of year, um, getting their Lupron injections. An exam, making sure or assuring their proper health and everything's good, discussion of diet, um, light and dark cycles and a dark box. Um, and an injection of Lupron. Cost-wise, it's between $23 and $30, so it's very inexpensive, and it can really save your ferret's life, and at the very least, really prolong its life. If the ferret already comes in with advanced adrenal disease, um, if it's in good health, we usually do surgery. We'll make an incision, and we will actually dissect out the adrenal tumor. But if they're still in good health, we will usually start with Lupron. There is a one-year implantable Lupron called Deslorelin or Superlorin, and we've used other things like melatonin and things like that to help quiet those hormones. So to prevent the adrenal disease, there's a few things. One, February, March, get on over here or find a vet that does Lupron injections, get that done. The second thing, as we alluded to a minute ago, was this dark box. It's really important knowing that ferrets, typically outdoor animals, they're not born bred to be house pets, um, they, uh, they really rely on dark and light cycles. So if you can imagine you wake up in the morning around seven, your house is alive and awake, you're up until 10, 11 o'clock at night, 
That is summer length of light all day long, all year round. If you can provide a dark box, a small box, almost like a little birdhouse with a small door on it that's dark, these ferrets will regulate their own day and light cycles. And we strongly recommend making or a, providing an appropriate dark box for these guys. We know this because in Europe, most of the ferrets are kept in hutches like rabbits. And when the sun sets, their, you know, their, their pituitary glands, everything turns off. So we do have full four full seasons out there. In the United States, because we keep them as indoor pets, we see a much, much larger rate of adrenal disease. Um, so um, the Lupron and these dark boxes. And then the third thing is early recognition of problems. If just because it's not February or March, if you see your ferret losing hair, um, showing behavior issues, swollen vulva, whatever it is, it's worth giving us a call, or again, calling a vet that sees ferrets that has an idea what's going on with them, and um, see if we can take care of that early rather than waiting until it's too late. It will save you a lot of money. and Again, it'll save the ferret a lot of pain and agony. Please call if you have any questions, 336-778-2738, or catch us online at animalarcvet.com. Thanks for listening.